Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Dorothy uh, from CCMA here. Welcome, as always, to our Friday Ask the Expert webinar. Uh, delighted to have so many of you on board this morning. And as always, we're just going to give it a minute or two for everybody to log in and register. Uh, on screen this morning, we have Neve O'Doherty of WSI and Neve is uh, our support in all of these. Thanks, Neve. And Michael Nolan, our guest speaker today. Uh, delighted to have Michael on board. Uh, We've, we've worked together on a number of projects over the years uh, and he's very much a guru in uh, the whole area of e-commerce. Uh, and I think when we were preparing for today, one of the things I was conscious of is that we probably haven't really spoken about the customer side of things in this whole uh, series of webinars. I think we've hosted 25 webinars to date and a lot I know has focused appropriately on employee engagement, employee well-being, um, and how companies are managing in this new ways of working. Uh, so I think what's important about this morning is that we're coming from a completely different perspective. Um, and Michael's going to share some, I think, really valuable insights on that. Um, and I think, you know, from Michael's experience, he's obviously worked with Car Trawler, he's worked with, I'll get it wrong, eShop World, I have it right, Michael, do I? Uh, yeah. yeah. And um, I know he was a very key member of our, uh, project on CX transformation with IDA and Enterprise Ireland and I know some of the guys from IDA are on the call this morning so um, he has a lot of valuable insights to share with us. So I'm going to hand over to Michael. Uh, as always we'll be recording the webinar. We really want to make this as interactive as possible so it very much is an opportunity to ask the experts so please send questions through as you know from now on I'll be keeping an eye on those and I know we have a poll that Michael wants to run as well that we'll do as part of it. Um, but I'll hand over to Michael and thanks as always and I'll let you do the introduction. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so uh, thanks, Dorothy. Uh, nice to, to see you. And um, uh, apologies if I'm looking a bit scruffy with uh, our COVID-19 lockdown uh, haircut uh, restrictions on at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Michael Nolan. I've uh, kind of had customer experience at the centre of my career uh, throughout my career. Um, but in the last 10 years, I've been fortunate enough to be in a, a set of leadership responsibilities where uh, customers always fall within my remit either uh, from a customer operation point of view and um, uh, with the likes of Paddy Power as head of customer operations uh, or then as chief product officer with eShop World and making sure that our product offering uh, met the, the customer's expectations and then most recently as chief customer officer with uh, Cartrawler. Um, but since the start of this year, uh, I've been out consulting um, and as everyone is aware of, we've been living through some uh, very strange uh, times. Uh, so even though it's only since the start of the year, it feels like dog years. Um, so it's been very interesting kind of being in a consulting role. Uh, it's given me a bit of a, a strategic uh, vantage point that a lot, a, a lot of the operators on the on the call today just wouldn't have had the opportunity because they were just neck deep in 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 the pandemic. Um, so you know, I have roughly broken that into three time periods by month, and you know, March for me was really about. Uh, I suppose it was the the Nike month. It, it was just do it. You know, just get up, get set up, um, you know, deal with a, a lockdown, uh, how could we w work remotely? April then for me was much more um, about how do we, how do we uh, get this working as smoothly as, as possible? Um, you know, it was really the conductor returning to the orchestra. Um, you know, how, how are we going to metric this? How are we going to get productivity as high as possible? How are we going to substitute all those uh, tactical uh, meetings and, and time away from that front end operations? And may have really seen green shoots in people being able to uh, think a bit, a bit more forward. Um, and get their head above the parapet. So there's been, you know, people have given people days off. There's been a lot of uh, kind of focus on uh, mental health and, you know, staff well-being, staff morale. And uh, as Dorothy touched on, 
one of the key ingredients for me now is that people are able to start to look ahead. And um, I think we've got both an opportunity to look ahead and to ensure that we are focusing on the customer and on the external as well as all that internal focus that has been necessary over the last few months. Uh, just to, to balance that now with going back and talking about the, the, the customer. Um, so how people uh, are doing it varies um, from, from company to company. What I've tended to be using is uh, one of the you know one of the models that are out there and one that I wanted to share with you today for those who haven't seen it is uh, McKinsey's 5R framework so I found it's very useful uh, in in working with a number of companies and effectively McKinsey has, has divided you know uh, this period into to five stages the first that you know I felt is associated with March was resolved how do you get in and just address the immediate challenges that the situation is is presenting you with? And um, you know how do you move everyone from uh, working in an office to to working remotely? And uh, I remember it was the day after um, St Patrick's Day, and uh, a, a client I was working with kind of rang and said, "Look, rather than what we were going to be talking about." Uh, we'd like to work on uh, BCP, you know, business continu continuity planning. Uh, and I went back and said, look, you've gone beyond the stage of business continuity planning. This is business continuity management. You are straight into this. And I have seen, you know, across a, a number of, of uh, organizations, some, some quite robust uh, BCP plans. But I haven't seen any that that were sufficient for this pandemic. Like a lot of them talked about alternative sites to go to, uh, you know, working out of other offices. That just wasn't possible in this scenario. So it was very much that resolve issue was all hands on deck. I think April was that kind of resilience period where people were kind of saying, okay, so where we have got everything up and running, you know, with some sticky plasters, how do we replace those sticky plasters now with proper um, robust uh, reporting structures and um, tactical meetings was another that was kind of being lost. And how do we just make this work efficiently? Um, May then or the start of May uh, was about that return. So, okay, we're over the, the hump of getting the frontline operations working, you know, what are those other things we need to, to return? Um, but what I really wanted to focus on uh, in this webinar is, is the final two R's there, reimagination and reform. Uh, and reimagination for me is, is, is key. We, a, a lot of the language I've heard being used to date has been backward looking. So it's been, you know, we need to return to uh, we need to get back to, and uh, I, I don't think we're going back, not fully. Um, you have companies like Twitter, Square, Facebook, Shopify, Coinbase have all come out and said that their workers need never return to an office. You've got Google coming back and say, no one needs to return until the end of the year. Um, we're, we're not going to go back to the way it was completely. There are going to be new models and moving forward, uh, potentially not fully remote, but definitely hybrids. And, you know, the, the, the digital advances that people were expecting to take place over the next five to 10 years have all taken place now in two months. You know, it's, it's, it's been phenomenal. So we need to reimagine what that next normal is going to be. Um, and then there's also the, the, the reform piece. So how do, we, how do we change our structures to that reimagination? Um, and secondly, the other lens that I wanna run over this today is 
the external versus internal. All of those five uh, R's you can take on an internal basis and it's important to do that. But, you know, we, we have to always remember, and I always go on about this, but everything we do has to be in, in response to what the customer needs. So we need to understand and reimagine what their next normal is going to be as well. Uh, so I think it's it's time for our first poll, and um, I, I've dealt with a number of companies, but I'd really like to understand uh, from you guys what stage of this, you know, using this model, do you feel your organisation is currently at? So, um, are you guys still stuck in resolve? You're still trying to get things up and running? Uh, have you moved on to resilience? Um, or have you gone all the way to reimagination and reform? And are you, um, you know, are are you sitting back there, uh, kind of smugly uh, enjoying this, thinking that uh, you you've you've got this all covered? Great, Michael. So that poll is live now. Uh, we're just going to give it another ten or fifteen seconds. See the uh, votes coming in already. Okay, so closing it off now. And so, so it should be up there now. Okay, well that's uh, that's great. Um, it, it, uh, I'm, I'm delighted to see, I was worried that some people would still be stuck in the resolve and potentially those people who are still stuck in the resolve can't afford the time to be on a webinar. Um, but it's great to see uh, that there are some people who've, who've started to move into that reimagination stage. Um, and so I think this is is really where uh, uh, where we are now. And uh, uh, you know what what I think uh, the 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 next few uh, pieces that I'll talk about uh, are are aimed at. Um, so I think the the, the first criteria to be customer centric is to give yourself the space to do that so for that 14 percent of of customer uh, of respondents uh, it sounds like you already have made that space but uh with some of the clients that i was working with that in itself has become quite difficult you know getting uh time blocked out in a remote working uh, scenario to work on this might seem like a luxury i think uh it's not. I think it's to to kind of say it, you need to start imagining this now because this is what's happening to your customers today, and you know you, most of you will have competing brands out there, and you don't want them to steal a a, a march on you. And um, I think another uh, important piece uh, that I would uh, kind of make sure that you don't fall into the mistake of is the need to re-question all your kind of current customer assumptions. So you will have made assumptions and you will have made uh, kind of findings from surveying your customers over the last three to four years and building up strong data sets that says our customer likes X and, uh, and you know our customer wants to be treated in a certain way and our uh, customer likes a certain kind of voice. Um, yeah, you need to, you need to re-question all of those. Um, and it's difficult at the moment because we, we are still in a, a, a state of flux, but you know, don't hold any of those as sacred cows. Um, the other piece that I would uh, kind of want to make sure that everyone's doing is being as proactive as possible uh, at the moment. Um, and the kind of queries that your customers want to have answered will have changed in the current situation. And I'd, I'd give an, a, an example of a a client I've been working with who, who kind of runs a small group of uh, food outlets 
and they uh, have a good social media presence and they were uh, posting pieces around you know baking at home and you know recipes and keeping safe and it was you know it was all good but three of their locations were open but on limited hours and limited menus and they'd have wellness posts going up and comments that were coming back in the in it where you know is this location open or i thought this was location was open but the shutters were down so you know now they're being much more proactive and in those customer queries you know and kind of going back and still doing the wellness but in between kind of saying you know remember this location is open and these are the new uh opening hours um you know and as of uh, Wednesday, we're going to be open this location for takeaway only. Um, so make sure that you're getting out and being proactive with those most basic of queries that you just weren't having um, before, before this, uh, that customers just knew um, that you're just going to have to tell them about now. Um, and the, the other piece that I think the customers are are craving in any of the organizations I've been working with uh, is, you know, transparency and flexibility. And um, what, what I've seen is customers have felt that it's okay for, uh, for you not to know a, an answer to a question uh, that they might expect you to know in, in other times. Um, so if you don't know, or that's something that is still being worked on, be transparent with it. You know, just say, this is something that we need to, uh, you know, thank you for your question, really good question. Um, I don't have an answer for you now. I'll try to get this for you as quickly as possible. Um, and flexibility as well. Uh, you know, there's a number of organizations that are quite process driven and, you know, I. I I'm a Lean Six Sigma practitioner, so I, I understand the importance of processes, but you need to have flexibility uh, at this time, and you need to be having conversations with the other departments in the company about how far you can, you can push that flexibility. And, you know, you are seeing companies that have taken this approach succeed and getting great kudos, be it from a, you know, NPS point of view or being uh, kind of uh, brand ambassadors on social media. So I think it's, it's critical for you to be putting, putting the customer first. Michael, a question for you. Uh, what kind of customer assumptions are you talking about when you say survey them? Because I'm conscious of the current environment people don't want, you don't want to be throwing loads of surveys up out there because people have their own personal challenges going on at the moment. But what's yeah, the it's 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 a it's a really valid question. So thanks uh, thanks for that. Um, you're in a difficult situation now, uh, surveying because we are in a state of flux. Um, so I think you need to be uh, you, you know your your normal NPS uh, survey is my is always my go to, and it's you know it, it's it's always supposed to be. You know, uh, would you recommend uh, this company? Would you recommend? You know, how did you uh, recommend this experience? And a, and a, a, an open question uh, box. So it, it's the need to give that priority in assessing that. Uh, if you're finding things, survey specific areas. So, um, you know, be it uh, if I use my re restaurant example. Um, you know, during these times, what are your three biggest questions about our company? Um, try to go out and, and, and find out as, as, uh, as much as you can about them. And a question from Bart. Uh, when it comes to the reimagination stage, aside from more remote work, what are you seeing out there as the key things that have changed? Uh, planning for me, and he's given examples. I think planning for medium-term revenue reduction changes in customer behaviour. Um, yeah. So I suppose in in the context of customer, it's about uh, trying to understand. Look, what are the customer trends going to be? So it's 
it's more around uh so you know if in the past your customer was generally interacting with you during the business day you know what does that mean now you know did they expect a certain formality uh from you that maybe they don't uh expect anymore um how do they view your company now ha has your brand got you know recognition for something that you potentially didn't have in the voice um, and you know it, it's it's what you're going to try and do and Bart's probably well placed for this you're going to need to be analyzing the data that's coming in you know so you know what is the the the, the new set of questions that are coming up that customers are asking and um, you know what's the new environment that they are living in that you think is going to maintain um, and then it's about moving forward it'll be about validating those you know so uh, if it is a case that our customers always interacted with us in the evening time now they seem to be interacting with us over lunchtime you know that's something to 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 look at uh, they always wanted to come into uh, a store to do it face to face. Uh, they've now got comfortable doing it remotely. They used to do it, uh, want to do it by phone. They're now comfortable uh, doing it by chat. So that's the kind of reimagination I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, so right. I'll. I'll, I'll move on um, on on the uh, kind of topics. Uh, the other one, um, kind of when it comes to reimagination, uh, that I would think about is, you know, what is your new brand? And specifically for the people that we have on the on the call, what is your new contact center uh, center brand? So, any of you will that have heard me speaking before will know that I always kind of bleat on about the contact center often being the personification of your brand. And, um, you know, the uh, customers can get all kinds of snazzy uh, marketing, see ads, but actually uh, when they're on a chat or when they pick up the phone, that advisor who is dealing with them is often the first human that they've interacted with. And your brand identity uh, can be can be destroyed in that one interaction if that person doesn't align with what they they feel the brand is about. Um, and there's a couple of things here. First of all, uh, I think this pandemic has given us the, the biggest uh, empathy opportunity that th th there's definitely been in my lifetime. You know, this is a global pandemic, uh, you know, around, 200 nations impacted, uh, over 5 million cases now, uh, a third of a million deaths. Um, you never have a situation where, where there's as much empathy going on between the advisor and the customer. Everyone's in the same boat. Uh, and everyone can understand the situation that's going on. Uh, that, that allows for building huge empathy between your brand and, uh, and, and your customers. Um, and the other one uh, that I've I've kind of seen working really well and really poorly um, is the opportunity this has presented to really prove whether culture your your corporate culture is true or not. You know your your corporate culture. A lot of a lot of companies have come out with you know what their values are. Uh, and it's only in times like this that they really get tested. And, you know, are they a, truly a North Star? Uh, and are they something that has guided action? So when everything else, the rule books have been thrown out. So are your values what are guiding you at this point in time? And you are seeing stories of, of, of brands whose, whose uh, culture has just come to the fore. And, you know, my, my favorite example is Unpost. You know, that, that kind of uh, culture of we are part of the community has really come through. 
and you know i suppose that's that's what we had for our second poll today you know has has your company's culture uh, been a, a, a North Star? And I suppose we have that going from the definitely not, um, where people feel that they've actually done the opposite to what their culture said, to definitely yes. You know, are you the, the like the unpost where, you know, when the rule book goes out the, the window, you can kind of proudly point to the fact that your actions have been guided by, uh, by the values. Um, and I think it's important. Just saying that's live there. It might give people a little bit more time considering it, there's just some long answers in it. So just see the answers. And just, to, sure. just to add, Michael, we've about five minutes left. So just be conscious of that. Great. Um, so I'll just talk while, while we're, we're waiting for this. You know, this for me, why am I talking about this when we're talking about uh, our customers? This is similar to the opp uh, empathy opportunity. This is a huge opportunity for uh, contact centers and those in touch with the customer experience to be uh, really promoting the company's culture. You know, and, and one of the things that I, I have been promoting uh, with some clients is, can we bring that into the language, uh, the contact language? So be that the, you know, stay safe message. Um, okay, so that there, you know that that's uh, that's that's interesting. Um, so I think, uh, you know, the, the the companies where the definitely yes is coming back, you know, that's a great position to be in. And um, the kind of, you know, makes sense as well. I think a lot of focus has been on, um, uh, has been on. Uh, operational efficiencies. So I can understand if people are kind of saying that the the values aren't front and center. But I do think, again, I said it earlier, it's all about making time at the moment. So if you can make time, uh, really do think about your culture and how you can get that into the voice of the, the customer. Um, and so if I move then kind of on to just that, uh, a few tips on the, the reimagining the customer's next normal. Um, you know, it, 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 you're trying to kind of figure out what is here to say so that it, there will have been massive changes in the last few weeks. What do you feel will uh, outlast the, 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 the COVID pandemic? Or even what do you think will, will last for at least the medium term, at least a 12 month period? Uh, so that's, you know, the move to digital adop adoption, I don't see it's going back. Uh, the move to at least hybrid remote working, I don't see it's going back. But what do you guys see? And what does that mean for the context of, of your relationship with your customers? Um, and this, this is, is going to require more than, you know, people going off this webinar and just saying, okay, I'll reimagine this in the next half hour. Uh, and you really need to engage a plan ahead team. Uh, so most organizations might have, you know, people working on customer's insights or customer research, uh, or even people who've worked on corporate strategy. You know, how can you engage with them uh, in order to, to help build this out? Um, and again, I think this is a corporate uh, imperative, not just a contact center uh, imperative, but um, it needs to be uh, in place and for the contact center groups to be uh, participating in that. So I'm just conscious that uh, we're up to the half hour there, Dorothy. I don't know if there was many other questions. Yeah, no, one, one last question. Uh, people are finding it difficult to figure out what their customer wants today. So how can they look into a crystal ball for three to six months time? Yeah, and there's, there's a number of stuff that is happening today that you don't want to jump the gun on. You don't want to say, oh, you know, people are, are always talking to us in their pajamas, so we'll start wearing pajamas. Um, it, it is something that needs, uh, and I suppose that's where I was getting to with the, you know, don't just go off this call and think about it for half an hour. This is something that requires a team to be in place to look at what are all the changes that have happened and then to do a proper assessment as to, 
uh, strategically what are the things that we think are here to stay. And this is the kind of thing that will be happening somewhere in the, the company if it's not, if you're worried about what resources to use. This is happening every year from a budgeting point of view, a planning ahead point of view, uh, and you know there are other organizations out there, uh, market research and, and customer experience um, consultancies that can help with that. Yeah, and I'm conscious. I know there's some and there's some companies even on this call where the industry sector, you know, the you know the travel industry is probably the biggest example. And even you know your your former alma mater car trawler have facing very challenging times. So there is the scope and the time and probably the bandwidth to start looking at some of those things. And I you know even just looking online today, you know, different countries are announcing that they're going to be opening up to tourism and you know different dates would be relevant. So you know, I suppose it is now the time to use planning when you have probably spare resources. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, it takes spare spare resources. Probably some of the people are uh, shaking their head at what spare resources. But, you know, hopefully if people are at that kind of um, return reimagination stage on the McKinsey model, uh, they've got that bit of bandwidth back. And it's just really important. Nature abhors a vacuum. If you don't associate those now with planning ahead, and getting into that reimagination and getting into that reform stage, you lose this window. And other big companies are doing this, so you don't want to be behind the curve. Great. Thanks a million, Michael. I'm conscious we're only a minute or two over, uh, but thank you so much. Uh, I know I think I'll get me to put up your contact details there. You're on LinkedIn, but if anybody wants to contact you another way, just drop me an email. I'm happy to share your contact details. So really appreciate it. Uh, just to remind people, a copy of a recording of the webinar will be available later today, as well as a copy of Michael's presentation. So thanks so much, Michael. Uh, and just do my normal housekeeping bits and pieces. Uh, our webinar next Tuesday will be on, I just have to get the title, COVID-19, take the time to pause, evaluating your personal values, your triggers, and creating your pers personal mission statement. So all about us uh, for Tuesday. So uh, certainly hope some of you can tune in for that one. And then next Friday uh, in this slot, in our Ask the Experts slot, we're absolutely delighted to have Ashley Williamson, uh, Head of Service for Sky Ireland, uh, who's going to share their experiences and what, again, actually part of their presentation will be about their plans for the future. Um, and the, the last one, just to remind everybody about our competition. I don't know if you have that slide there, Need just to say um, we're still running our competition. Um, just thank you, Albert. Albert has said excellent talk. So many thank you for that, Albert. And um, the competition is for your uh, to win a really nice headset, a poly headset uh, or a team prize of a voucher, pizza voucher, just to send something funny and creative in terms of a picture of your how your team are working remotely or your own remote working situation. So uh, thanks a million, everybody. Uh, really great to have you on board and we'll hopefully see you again soon. Michael, thanks as always. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.